ต่อไปนะครับก็จะเป็นช่วงของ Keynote Speaker นะครับโดยในวันนี้นะครับเราได้รับเกียรติจากท่านศาสตราจารย์ดรภูมิโอมทัศโอกะจากมหาวิทยาลัยเกียวโตโตกเกียวนะครับขอโทษซึ่งท่านจบการศึกษาจากมหาวิทยาลัยโตเกียวนะครับแล้วก็ท่านได้ไปทำงานอยู่ที่สถาบันวิจัยเกี่ยวกับระบบสาธารณูปโภคของประเทศญี่ปุ่นเป็นเวลา4ปีก่อนที่จะกลับไปทำงานเป็นอาจารย์ในมหาวิทยาลัยโตเกียวนะครับจนกระทั่งท่านเกษียณนะครับในตำแหน่งศาสตราจารย์นะครับซึ่งปัจจุบันท่านเป็นเอมิเรตัสโปรเฟสเซอร์ของมหาวิทยาลัยโตเกียวนะครับและท่านยังเป็นปัจจุบันท่านยังเป็นศาสตราจารย์อยู่ที่มหาวิทยาลัยโตเกียวยูนิตี้ออฟไซน์นะครับท่านอาจารย์ทัสซิโอกะเป็นผู้ที่มีประสบการณ์เป็นอย่างสูงนะครับในด้านของการทดสอบในห้องปฏิบัติการพฤติกรรมของดินรวมทั้งการประยุกต์ใช้พวก g e o s y n t h e t i c นะครับกับโครงสร้างทางด้านวิศวกรรมปัตภีนะครับนอกจากนี้ท่านอาจารย์ทัศโอกะยังได้ร่วมกับองค์กรวิชาชีพต่างๆนะครับโดยท่านได้เป็นรอ,องประธานของสมาคมต่างๆเช่นสมาคมของซอยแมชชีนิกแล้วก็ Geo Technical Engineering ของโลกนะครับเป็นรองประธานของ JSCE ซึ่งเป็นองค์กรของวิศวกรในประเทศญี่ปุ่นนะครับแล้วก็ JGS ซึ่งเป็นวิศวกรในด้านปัตตภีของประเทศญี่ปุ่นนะครับนอกจากนี้ท่านยังเป็น President ขององค์กร JGS แล้วก็ IGS ซึ่งเป็นองค์กรทางด้าน Geo s y n t h e t i c ด้วยนะครับ Uh, dear distinguished guests and participants, uh, it is an honor for this conference uh, to have a keynote lecture from Professor Tasioka, uh, who will share his knowledge and experience from his extensive study in the application of geosynthetic material to geotechnical works. Professor Tasioka graduated from University of Tokyo. 41 years ago, he has been in the uh, Public Work Research Institute of Japan for four years before moved to University of Tokyo, and then to uh, the University, uh, Tokyo University of Science. Professor Tatsuka is an active researcher in uh, many fields. He got a lot of awards from many societies, including JGS, JSCE, IGS, ASTM, and also uh, Inter uh, International Society of uh, Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. He has been the chairperson of TC29 of ISSMGE and also vice president of ISSMGE, JSCE. Uh, he also the president of JGS and IGS. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Welcome, Professor Tasio. Okay, thank you very much for your kind introduction. So my talk today is a design, construction, and the performance of GRS structures for railways in Japan. Uh, Geosynthetic rainfall soil, GRS retained wall. Uh, this is a composite soil uh, retained structures. <clears throat> the three uh, main elements are soil, reinforcement, and facing. If material characterization, design, and construction are properly done, such Walls with excellent uh, exhibit uh, will exhibit excellent performance while being economical. Today, I would like to emphasize this point: the the importance of the facing rigidity and the facing reinforcement connection should not be overlooked. I have uh, four topics today. First is a variety of GR structures for railways including high-speed train lines in Japan, 
This is the state of art of the DRS technology. Second is the basic advantage of DR3 walls with the stage constructed full height ridge facing. Third is the collapse of soil structures by earthquakes, heavy rainfalls, floods, storms, tsunami, and the restoration to DR structures. So, <clears throat> so this is to sh show a high cost effectiveness of GR structures against natural disasters. The fourth, fourth is the GRS internal bridge. This is the most advanced GRS technology. First is the, uh, a, a variety of GR structures for railways. This is showing high-speed train uh, called Shinkansen in Japanese network today. So black line is the uh, line in operation, and uh, green one is in operation, but a narrow gauge. Uh, red part is uh, complete, but soon opened. Uh, the broken uh, line, uh, pink line is uh, under construction, and the blue dot lines at the design stage. So this is showing a vehicles of high-speed train line in Japan, so there are a variety of uh, vehicles. <clears throat> So there are three generations of Shinkansen in terms of uh, uh, civil engineering structures. The first generation is the Tokaido uh, line between Tokyo and Osaka, which was opened 1964. So uh, this is showing the length ratio of different structure types for Shinkansen. Uh, the uh, light blue is the embankment. Green is a viaduct uh, that is RC frame structure, and the pink one is a bridge, and the red one is a tunnel. The first generation uh, Tokai line opened 1964. For this, uh, with this line, 54 percent of the total length is embankment. However, there are uh, serious problems. First is long-lasting large residual settlement. So we, uh, the, that means large bumps immediately behind the bridge abutments and box culverts. Second is low stability against rainfalls and earthquakes. So this required, is requiring a long-lasting maintenance even until today. So ex these are extremely costly. So this is short, one example of the uh, settlement of the embankment. Uh, uh, green, uh, sorry, uh, blue one is the, the location bridge. So uh, the settlement continued Im uh, from immediately after construction. So after one year, that became one meter. So second generation is the, uh, uh, these lines, uh, Sanyo, open 19, uh, 1972. Joets uh, opened 1975 and Tohoku opened 1982. The second generation, now the, uh, the uh, RC viaduct, that, that is uh, RC frame of structure and bridge were adopted in place of embankments. Amount of embankments uh, uh, reduced drastically. However, these structures are costly and not environmental friendly when on-site soil from excavation of slope tunnel is available. The, now the third generation, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Hokurik uh, open 1997, uh, Kyushu uh, 204, and Hokkaido 2010, uh, sorry, uh, 2016. Two. So now the uh, third generation, now we are returning to soil structures now, this is GRS structures were relevant because of high performance and low cost. So uh, small residual deformation, so we can use slab tracks. And highly stable against the rainfalls, floods, earthquakes, and environmentally friendly when on-site soil from excavation slope and tunnel is available. The, this is showing a continuous RC slab uh, roadbed. So this, uh, the, 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 uh, the construction cost is, is relatively high, but the, uh, this re largely reduced 
maintenance cost. So then we need a very small, uh, uh, the allowable settlement of south soil is very small. So this is not constructed on conventional embankments, but this is now constructed on GR structures. So this is showing the location of GR's retain wall in Japan. You can see for uh, the uh, three lines. So this is the, in many place on, in line. This is show the GR structure for new lines. So the latest project is the Hokkaido High Speed Train Line. So opened in, in beginning of 2016. So number of GR structures were densely constructed in place of conventional type structures. That is important. There are no conventional retaining wall, no conventional bridge apartment. This is showing the uh, typical place. Uh, this, uh, the uh, R means uh, GRS retain wall. So in total, 3,500 uh, 3, to meter for this project. And A is a GRS apartment. 29 were constructed in place of conventional type uh, bridge apartment. Also, a GRS internal bridge, not in, at this place, uh, were fastly constructed. And, and B uh, denotes the GRS box carbat. T is a GRS tunnel protection. So this is showing a typical GRS retain wall for, for Hokkaido uh, high-speed train line. Uh, showing the, uh, this is immediately after RC facing was constructed by casting in place concrete. This is completed. So box carbat is in the in between, uh, inside, uh, in, in between the uh, RC, uh, GRS retain walls. And this is tunnel exit. Uh, this is showing uh, a 30.4 meter high GRS retain wall bridge abutment. Bridge abutment is now soil structure. So the uh, first the soil structure is constructed, oh. and uh, second the uh, facing is constructed. This is showing the uh, location of the GR structures uh, which have been constructed so far. The total wall length is uh, 158 kilometer. Total number of the site is uh, uh, more than 1,000. And uh, I like to emphasize that the, uh, there are no problematic case uh, during and after construction. That means no problem so far in any project. This is showing the, uh, uh, the uh, wall lengths constructed every year from 1989 uh, 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 until today. So the, the, uh, the uh, accumulated total, uh, total length is now reached to 160 meter. During uh, more than 20 years, we have uh, many events. 1995, Kobe earthquake, and uh, uh, so 2000, nearly uh, about around 2000, restart of construction of a new barrel train lines, high speed train lines, and the 204 Niigata Kenchi earthquake, then uh, 201 Great East Japan earthquake. So we had uh, many lessons from these events. The, the, why GRS structures have been become the standard soil structures for Japan Railway? So standard means that now the uh, uh, nearly 100% of retained wall is GRS structures. 100% bridge abutment is a GRS bridge uh, retained wall abutment. So these are re now replacing the conventional type embankments, retain walls, and bridges. First is the higher performance for a long term a high performance, and also high performance against earthquakes, heavy prolonged rainfalls, and floods. And second, the low cost for construction and long term maintenance. So this is showing one example of the comparison of the cost between a conventional type retain wall structure and GR structures. When the, we use the piles for conventional uh, uh, retain wall uh, for a six, uh, 20 meter thick relative soft ground, while we don't use piles for GR retain walls, 
And the, when the cost is equal to one with conventional time return wall structure, construction cost for DR structure is a point, a 32 percent. Maintenance cost decreased to half. So total cost for uh, that is a life cycle cost becomes nearly one third. When the, uh, uh, the, there are no piles with conventional uh, detail wall uh, construct, when constructed on relative soft ground, in, even in the case, construction cost is 81 uh, percent and the maintenance cost nearly half and the to, uh, life cycle cost is 0 .70, uh, 70, uh, 77 percent. So low cost is uh, very important compared to the uh, conventional type stru structures. So now the, the summary of the first part, we have the three generations of elevated structures for high speed lines in Kansai, Japan. First generation is the embankment and the conventional type return wall, so Tokaido. There are many problems. Then the, this structure switched to RC viaduct, uh, the, but the, uh, the problem is the high cost and the no use of excavated soils. The third generation since 2000 is now where relevant the GR3 retain wall with full height ridge facing becomes, has become the standard struct, uh, structures because of high stability against rainfalls, earthquakes, and high cost effectiveness in construction of and maintenance. Second topic is the uh, basic advantage of GR3 retain walls with stage constructed full height ridge facing. So what is the most important difference between conventional type written walls, gravity type, cantilever, and GRC written walls with full height ridge facing? So conventional type written wall is a cantilever structure, so we have a large forces in the facing and large overturning movements and large lateral load at footing bottom. Therefore, we need, we need a massive strong facing and pile foundation. So, so uh, even so, we have uh, the uh, retain, uh, conventional type retain wall is a, real, uh, is a problem with a relatively uh, low stability, particularly against sasim loads. This is showing the collapse of gravity type retain wall uh, during 1995 Cove earthquake. This is a very shocking uh, case. So the railway company uh, totally switched to the design policy uh, uh, not not constructed uh, 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 gravity type retain wall anymore. The, this is showing a GRS retain wall with a full height rigid facing. So now facing is a continuous beam supported at many levels with a small span. The span is a 30 centimeter. So then we have a very small forces in the facing. So we need only a, a simple facing structure. And also, small overturning moment and lateral force at bottom of the facing. Therefore, usually we don't construct a pile foundation. So uh, then the, the structure became very stable, particularly against seismic loads. This is the one wall. Uh, I took this picture in 1992, immediately after construction. I took this picture one week after the Kobe earthquake. The uh, wall survived, but the Japanese uh, wooden house collapsed. Uh, many uh, wooden house collapsed in front of the wall. This is another case. Uh, this is showing the conventional retain wall. Uh, uh, the, we need a pile foundation, and also sometimes we need a, we need a R, uh, reinforced concrete anchorage. So. In comparison, the uh, DR structure does not need uh, piles and uh, full height facing very thin. This is the uh, uh, conventional type retain wall, uh, which has been constructed for highway in Japan. But then the, this part is a GRS retain wall, uh, and uh, the, so the, now uh, you can see the totally different the, the, the uh, structure and uh, uh, the GR structure is much more cost effective than a conventional type cantilever RC retain wall. 
The function of facing. First is the facing is an important and essential structural component, confining the backfill and developing large tensile force in the reinforcement. The second is the earth pressure at the facing should be high enough, not low, high enough, to provide a sufficient confined pressure to the backfill. Third is the facing should be flexible enough to accommodate the deformation of supporting ground during construction, but should be rigid enough uh, during service. So this can be achieved by stage construction. So I, 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 I'm going to explain these one by one. Th this is showing two basic force equilibriums with reinforced walls. A, along uh, potential active failure planes. So we always consider this the equilibrium in design. So potential active line, and the earth pressure is activated and the earth pressure is registered by tensile forces in reinforcement. But now we had another important the, uh, force equilibrium at B. This is B at facing. So this is very important but often ignored. So the, uh, I like to emphasize the paramount importance of connection strengths between facing and reinforcement. This is showing the available tensile forces when connection strength is zero, or if the facing is very flexible. Then no earth pressure is activated at the wall face. So then we have a low tensile forces in the reinforcement, in particular at the low wall level. Then in, in, the, in the active zone, we have a low confined pressure, therefore we have a low soil strength. So that means low stability of the wall. In comparison, this is showing the available tensile forces when facing is rigid enough and connection strength is high enough. Then we have a high earth pressure at the wall face, then high tensile forces in the reinforcement. In, then the, in, in the active zone, we have a high confined pressure, therefore we have a high so strength. So that means high stability of the wall. This is a basic uh, principle of GR structure, which is used for high speed train and also ordinary rain ro uh, railways in Japan. So the, we have a problem of discrete panel facing. This is showing the failure of four Terrame walls in east, eastern uh, Tennessee. So uh, first, the, uh, the uh, uh, pushing out of the limited number of panels caused by pull out of metal strip reinforcement due to insufficient lengths. This, this resulted in the collapse of the whole wall. So local failure may quickly result in the overall collapse. This we, this we should avoid. Unfortunately, we have a similar failure in Japan. You can see the uh, start of failure from uh, only one panel, but eventually the total wall collapse. So, <clears throat> and also the, this is showing the failure of the Terra May wall along a canal in Mexico during a hurricane during 2010. So in, also in this case, local failure in a limited number of discrete panel of facing cause, uh, uh, were caused by scarring of the supporting ground. And this resulted into failure of the four walls. So the railway engineer, very conservative, they don't like this type of failure. So this is showing the failure of GR's written wall with modular blocks Face, uh, for facing in Taiwan during 1999 July teach earthquake. Again, the uh, local failure became the uh, failure of the total war. Then the, we are expecting the uh, three dimensional effects of full height rigid facing. Each unit of full height rigid facing integrated to reinforced backfill, which is located between the construction joints, behaves as a monolith. So even if local failure is going to take place somewhere in wall, it does not develop toward collapse of the four wall. Uh, another the, the three dimensional effects is this. The, uh, suppose we have uh, uh, the lateral load H. Against H, each unit of full height ridge facing integrated to reinforce backfill behaves as a monolith. So a full height ridge facing becomes a foundation. Also, a full height ridge facing becomes a foundation for superstructures such as electric poles, nodes barrier walls, and bridge girders. 
So flood risk facing increases the stability against concentrated load on the uh, wall crest. The green one shows the failure plane when the facing is flexible or the connection strength is low. Red one is failure plane that develops when they're using a flood risk facing with a high connection strength. This results in a high wall stability. So in this case, high connection strength between uh, uh, facing and the, uh, the uh, uh, reinforcement becomes very important. So, so full-hand ridge facing contribute to wall stability, but how to construct? This was a key uh, uh, technology when we, uh, uh, for when we considered when we are developing this technology. Because several problems we have during and after wall construction, if Flood rigid facing is constructed before and during the construction of the backfield, like this. So firstly, the, uh, uh, we, have a uh, we need a plopping, and uh, we have a large load in plopping during construction. And then it becomes difficult to compact the backfield immediately behind the facing. And uh, the connection between facing and the reinforcement may be damaged by relative settlement between facing and backfill. And tensile force do not develop before re uh, removing the propping. Then we have an uncontrolled movement of facing which takes place upon the removal of the propping. So these problems can be solved by the stage construction procedure. Stage construction. First, we construct the, uh, uh, this leveling part and uh, then the uh, uh, <coughs> construction uh, with the help of uh, uh, with the help of gravel gabions placed at the shoulder of each layer. The good compaction of the backfield is achieved by a small lift, 30 centimeter. Uh, so this resulting from a small vertical spacing of reinforcement layers, and no ridge facing during backfield compaction. So then the, then the wall is com, uh, completely like this. Then, uh, uh, after sufficient compression of the backfill and the supporting gland has taken place, our full head rigid facing is constructed by casting in place concrete directly on the uh, wrapped around wall. So casting in place concrete directly on the zeotic grid wrapping around wall uh, around wall face mean that fresh concrete enters the uh, gravel backs through a uh, aperture of the uh, uh, grid. So we are using PVA because this PVA polybutylene alcohol have a very high resistance against the high pH of concrete. The firm connection between the facing and the reinforcement is can be ensured because PVA has a good adhesiveness with concrete and, and biaxial structure enhances the connection strength. So then the, uh, by this stage construction, facing a reinforcement connection is not damaged by different settlement between the facing and the reinforcement during and after construction. The construction using a comp compressive backfill on a compressive soil layer becomes possible. This is a case of Nangwa Wall. This is a yard for Shinkansen, constructed 1993 to 1994 on very thick clay deposit, 30 meter in uh, thickness, in thick. So GRS retain wall, 2.5 meter high, completed one, and two kilometer long. So backfill was nearly saturated soft clay. Constructed, first construction was 3.5 meter high embankment on thick, very soft clay deposit, no pile foundation. Then the stage construction, first GRS uh, uh, wall without full height, full, full height lead facing, then preload, a settlement of a meter, the removing preload, and full height lead facing. This is showing the uh, uh, during preloading. So settlement was one meter. So, uh, uh, so the GRS retain wall, wall is n does not have a, a full height facing at this stage. 
After re re removing the fluoride uh, preload, the fluoride retracing was constructed. So nearly such a clay uh, was used. Uh, then the composite of non-woven and woven zero textile was used. Woven part is a reinforcement, non-woven part is a, is a drainage. I took this picture 20 years after construction, so uh, this year. So uh, yes, the uh, uh, wall is uh, functioning without any problem. So now this is the completed wall. The, this is a reconstruction of the existing slope of vertical wall for a yard for high speed train line at Biajima. This is the, the start of the, cons uh, before the construction, and this is the drain construction, and th this is the completed one. Th this is another project. So the, uh, this wall is directly supporting a very busy rapid railway. Uh, so uh, cross section is like this. So both sides of the existing railway embankment were reconstructed to GR-13 wall having full height ridge facing and a very severe, a severe space restriction. So, uh, so this is complete wall. So the, the third point uh, topic, the collapse of soil structure by earthquakes, heavy rainfalls, floods, storms, tsunami and their restoration to GR structures. So uh, I showed this picture, and uh, uh, this is the, uh, the wall before the earthquake, and uh, this is the wall after the earthquake. So by this, the good performance, uh, the uh, railway engineers in Japan are, are fully convinced of, of this technology. So then the, uh, the this wall collapsed during 1995 COVID earthquake, so of totally overturning failure. So this was reconstructed to GR structure like this. And uh, we had a, a number of earthquakes after 1990 COVID earthquake. One of them is the 204 Niigata Kenchi earthquake. The, uh, uh, the uh, embankments for highway and uh, railway collapsed like this. So this was reconstructed in this way. And the blue one is uh, before failure, and the uh, black one is after failure, and the red one is the con reconstructed GR-13 wall. So, <clears throat> so this is another site uh, uh, after failure and completed wall. So this is showing the location of GR-13 wall with the front facing for railways, including high-speed trains, that had been constructed in affected area of 2011 Great East Japan earthquake, 95 sites, and but uh, and these were, were designed against very high seismic load, and no damage to all GR's written walls. So these facts validate again the current seismic design code for railway written wall. But all the retaining wall collapse during that earthquake, like this. This is a collapse of an old wing retaining wall for bridge apartment. And this was reconstructed to GR's retaining wall. And this is completed wall. And this is also showing another case, the failure of the railway in the mountain area. And this was also reconstructed to GR's retaining wall. I've been full face. In this case, height is a 14 meter. So this is showing the location of railway embankments that failed by heavy rains in 1990 and 1993 floods in Kyushu. So this is uh, the, uh, the uh, broken line in the tunnel. In between tunnel, this red arrow means uh, it shows the uh, location of the embankments that collapsed by flood 1990. So at the side of two, you can see the, the, uh, the embankments between tunnel exit totally disappeared by, uh, by this overflow of the flat water. So this is the uh, uh, completed wall. And uh, uh, GR-13 wall were constructed due to fast construction and the small construction machine necessary 
and the high stability against heavy rainfalls and earthquake and low cost for construction and maintenance. This is showing the uh, typical cross section. Now height is 35 meter, and uh, the lower part uh, for height of uh, seven meter is a DR18 wall to uh, accommodate a large diameter drain pipe. We had a bigger overtopping flood two years ago, the same place, and uh, the this is a uh, one site. So blue blue line means the uh, the original unreinforced field section, which survived the 1990 flood, but fully eroded by July 2012 flood. So, but this red one is a GRS section, which was fully eroded by the 1990 flood. Uh, the soil was uh, embankment, this part embankment, uh, back here was fully eroded by 1990 flood, but this part was restored in the 1991 and survived this July 2012 flood. Like this. This, blue, uh, this part, blue one, is a original, un, uh, originally unreinforced section which survived 1990 flood but fully eroded by the July 2001 flood. The red one is a GR section uh, and this survived. So this is showing the uh, GR structure is very strong against overflow topping, uh, overflow uh, flood. Another case is the collapse of retained wall by scarring and the loss, and loss of the backfill. So the uh, conventional wall, uh, uh, often we have many uh, uh, collapse cases of this type. It's a scarring and uh, overturning railway and the backfill lost and the road is closed and really close. But new idea is to construct such a structure by GR structure. So even we have some scarring, the, uh, uh, the, the structure does not collapse. So we can maintain some function of road and highway. This is the case of the uh, failure of the bridge, uh, wing, uh, wing retainable of, of the railway, July 2011. Now this is a standard practice to restore such a, a collapsed uh, uh, structure to GR as R structure like this. This is a cross section. So all these uh, information in the uh, paper in the proceeding. So I, I must. So now you can see uh, uh, this was constructed only ten days. Ten days. This I like to emphasize only ten days, and the cost is lower than conventional retain wall. Even, even larger scale of failure was collapse of seawall for length of one point kilometer for National Road Number One, southwest of Tokyo, by typhoon. So you can see overturning failure of the retained wall. But this was reconstructed to GR structure. So like this. So the uh, 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 this. Uh, the, this part is showing the uh, wrapped around GR structure under construction. And this is uh, the, uh, the uh, caching in place of concrete, face, concrete for full height facing, and this is complete wall. After this, we have many, many uh, typhoon so far, no problem. I hope forever. <laughs> Summary. The geosynthetic rainfall slopes showed a very high resistance against overtopping water flow. A number of conventional type retain wall and embankments that collapsed by recent severe earthquakes, heavy rainfalls, floods, and storms were reconstructed to DRS retain wall with full height facing soon after collapse. It was shown that this technology can construct stable retain wall under very difficult to design construction conditions requiring fast construction, uh, construction at the difficult sites, while ensuring high stability against overtopping flood, scarring, water action, etc., and low cost for construction and maintenance. Last topic, the GRS Integral Bridge, the most advanced GRS technology. We have a, a number of technical problems with conventional type bridges. The, we have constructed piles, our abutment, then back here, then problem starts. 
It's a displacement by earth pressure and ground settlement and lateral flow due to weight of the backfill and associated negative friction and bending of the piles. Then the, we construct bearing. Bearing is a high cost for construction, particularly uh, uh, costly for long-term maintenance. And we have uh, this uh, the settlement and particularly during earthquake. The uh, bearing is a very weak point for seismic loads. And the backfill settled down. What is the solution? First solution may be uh, integral bridge. So first, the uh, 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 piles and RC facing, continuous gather, and integration, no bearing, and backfill. Because of low construction maintenance cost of the structure part, due to no use of uh, gather bearing and no use of continuous gather, this structure becomes a standard structure for, uh, uh, for road in the United Kingdom and in North America. However, this technology does not become popular in Japan. First is the several unsolved old problems. One is still we have a problem of, of the settlement of soft clay and also the uh, long term uh, long term have an issue by the uh, uh, settlement of self weight and traffic load and large deformation by certain load. This old problem is not solved. In addition, we have a new problems with the integral bridge. That is, uh, we have a thermal, uh, seasonal thermal expansion and contraction of the gather. That is the uh, cyclic displacement at the uh, top of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the facing. Then we have a settlement of the backfill by active failure. And also, we have an increase in the earth pressure. So uh, to, to, this is showing the static lateral cycle loading test under plain strain condition by a student. So the, we apply uh, the uh, cyclic displacement here. Then this is the backfill. So, uh, and this is the observation. Here the, uh, we apply cyclic displacement. The top one is a lateral displacement. Uh, D by H, so about 0.6% in full uh, double amplitude. So this is the uh, time. So by applying a cycle load, earth pressure coefficient K increase with time. Uh, and at the same time, settlement L takes, uh, uh, at this place takes place. So uh, this becomes 1% to percent. This is too much. So why this takes place? This is due to dual ratchet mechanism. When the uh, facing move to active direction, we have an uh, active wedge. When the uh, facing is pushed back to the passive direction, this active wedge cannot, go, cannot be done. So this active wedge deforms as a part of passive wedge, not recovering the active displacement. But uh, the, the, the passive wedge is going to, to be formed. We, ha when we have a second active displacement. Uh, the, the active uh, wedge is reactivated. And then when we, we have a second passive displacement, again, the uh, passive deformation takes place. Repeating this procedure, we have uh, both active failure and development of the passive uh, uh, pressure. So the better solution would be GR's bridge abutment. Uh, uh, first, we uh, construct a GR's retain wall, then uh, the facing, and uh, movable and fixed bearing, and gather. <laughs> so first one was constructed 203 for new high-speed train line in Kyushu, in Takada. Here, Takada. So this is the uh, first one. So full-scale loading tests are performed to ensure the separation, uh, uh, resistance against separation between full height rigid facing and uh, reinforced backfill. So the, this is a big uh, full-scale test. And uh, uh, here the lateral load applied. Then the, we confirm that the, no worry, uh, uh, we don't need to worry about separation between the facing and backfill. 
Then the, the, this is the, uh, the latest one, 3.4 meter high GR3 wall bridge abutment here during construction, no concrete, no concrete. Then the, uh, for new high, uh, yes, then the completed one. So, so far in total about uh, 60 were uh, completed or designed. Yet, we have uh, still problems by using bearings, here at bearing, right? Because of high cost for construction and maintenance and low stability. Why not removing the bearing? So our, our current best solution, current, current best solution is GR's internal bridge. So ground improvement and GR's return wall, through hydrated facing, and the gather. Now here the structure integration, this one unit. So uh, I'll skip this part, so I have 10, ten minutes, okay? Five minutes? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we have, we performed the shaking table test. And we, we had a lot of ask as you know. So seismic design, the uh, most important part. So shaking table test, here the conventional type one. So uh, here the uh, counterweight to simulate long uh, gather. And this is the internal bridge. Internal bridge is uh, one unit of the structure. And this DRS retainable bridges. So we use the uh, bearings and just got it placed on the top of the facing. And this is the DRS internal bridge. And the gather and facing is one unit. And the reinforcement is connected to the back of the facing. So, so this is after we applied this 200 gallons. Still, already uh, movement starts. The other is still okay. But 600, large displacement, and the uh, internal bridge start moving uh, at the bottom. And the uh, uh, GR3 thin wall, now this part is show is, uh, some light displacement. Internal bridge, still, okay. So 700, you can see, clearly you can see this deformation, and this is still, okay. This is showing the uh, lateral displacement at top, and this is showing the lateral displacement at bottom, and this is the best acceleration of force structure. Conventional gravity type, showing a large displacement at already 200 gal. And uh, this one showed the uh, uh, GRC, uh, sorry, the displacement at the seal beam. Internal bridge show displacement here at this one. And the GRS internal bridge uh, show the uh, largest resistance. And uh, this is showing settlement here. Railway engineer, uh, uh, for uh, co uh, their concern is that the settlement here. So the conventional type show this settlement, and internal bridge show this settlement, but uh, a GR's internal bridge does not show any settlement. Particularly, this this is very important for high speed train. High speed train cannot stop uh, quickly. They need a two kilometer or three kilometer until stop. So if we have a, the uh, uh, bump here by earthquake, it's an accident. It's a serious accident. So 209, the, uh, uh, we constructed the full scale model in, uh, at the Railway Technical Research Institute. And we are performed the, the full scale cycle loading test, applying a thermal deformation of the gather and level two seismic design load to confirm the construction method and uh, design method. Then for Hokkaido Shinkansen here, uh, the Japanese railway engine, very brave, they adopted this the, uh, technology and they constructed the first one uh, here, uh, Kikonai. The length is uh, 12 meters, it's not big. However, this is the first one uh, for high-speed train. So now you can see uh, the uh, facing, and gather is one unit. It's a it's a, a frame like a frame structure, and but in, very importantly, 
uh, this facing is uh, back of the facing, zeotex side is connected. So, so uh, GADA and facing back here are all structurally integrated. So this is during construction. You can see first back field is constructed. And this completed one. This stage construction is very important with the uh, construction of box carbat crossing road, railway, and bank on soft soil. With the uh, conventional technology, we may construct piles, then box carbat, then embankment, then we have a settlement. So, uh, and then, then we have many problems of the, uh, these bumps and also the uh, load, uh, load, load uh, concentration and negat negative, uh, negative friction. The solution, now we can solve this problem by this DR technology. First, we uh, shallow ground improvement. First, we construct the geosynthetic reinforced embankment. And we wait for a while for the uh, settlement of the, the uh, uh, ground and compression backfield. Then we construct the box cover. Finally, we uh, 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 backfill. Like this. First, we construct the GR's retain wall, uh, base slab, facing, and like this. We are using this technology. Last topic is tsunami. Uh, 201, we have a great East Japan earthquake and a big tsunami. The tsunami, uh, the uh, uh, coastal dike did not work. Conventional one did not work. When we have an overtopping floor, we have a scouring here and also the uh, uplift force. So the, uh, the concrete slab facing disappeared. Then the uh, backfield quickly uh, scored. So then finally we have uh, such a uh, one. So the uh, conventional type, the uh, coastal dike did not work. So this, this could not survive at all. So new technology we, uh, we proposed and uh, backfield reinforced and facing like this. The important thing is that the facing is connected to the textile. Another damage to was uh, over 340 bridges were collapsed by great tsunami uh, during that earthquake. So this is a typical one, and also the gather was washed away, and the approach field also washed away. The solution we propose is the GR internal bridges, because now the uh, gather is connected to facing, facing is connected to backfield, and. Uh, also, the backfield is strong against overtopping uh, uh, flood water. So, Sandig Railway here was seriously damaged by a tsunami during 201 Great Earthquake. So, this is one place you can see, see the sea tunnel, the uh, bridge totally washed away. This picture was taken uh, uh, only uh, 10 days after the uh, uh, 20 days after the earthquake. So this is the during reconstruction of GRS structure. The railway engineer quickly uh, adopted, uh, convinced uh, by this, uh, this technology, and they now considering this could be standard structure for bridges. So they constructed the uh, GRS structure. Now the length is a 40 meter. We need a central pier, but all structures are integrated. This is the nearly completed. And uh, this is complete one. And uh, another place, Haipe, here the tunnel for railway, tunnel for road, you can see all bridge disappeared by tsunami. And uh, this is a complete one. Uh, now the length is 60 meter, and uh, uh, this is completed one. So now the, uh, the, the railway engineer now considering the, that uh, to use this technology, all bridges from now on, or even for high speed train and so on. And this is the uh, one place here, tunnel, and uh, this is the uh, railway level, and uh, 14 meter, but the tsunami came up to this uh, level. So all structure disappeared like this, uh, oh, sorry, like this. 
the, the RC structure is not strong against tsunami. So th they constructed the embankment like this as a tsunami barrier. Cross-section is like this. Now you see the, the embankment is reinforced and facing is connected to uh, uh, reinforcement. Also this place, the uh, one internal GRS internal bridge was constructed. So this is the picture taken uh, 20 days after the earthquake. All bridge disappeared by tsunami. And this drain construction, and this DRS internal bridge, this is a box carbat, and uh, this is a completed one. Okay, summary. By tsunami of 201 Great East Japan earthquake, a great number of coastal dikes were fully eroded, and a great number of bridges running along seashore lost their gutters and were approach fill. GR coastal dikes can survive both high seismic loads and sus subsequent overtopping tsunami current. GR's internal bridge have been, uh, have both high seismic stability and high resistance uh, against the strong tsunami current. These two types of GR structure were constructed to restore a railway that was seriously damaged by tsunami. Conclusion first. GR uh, retain walls have been a stage constructed full height ridge facing, have been constructed as important permanent retain wall for a total length of about 160 kilometers in Japan. It is now the standard retain wall technology for railways. Its current popular use is due to high cost effectiveness, in particular high performance during severe earthquakes, heavy rainfalls, uh, etc., and low maintenance cost. A great number of embankments and conventional tile retain or collapse during severe earthquakes. Many of them were reconstructed to GR's retain walls with a stage constructed for had ridge facing. A great number of embankments and conventional tile retain were collapsed by heavy rainfalls, floods, storms, tsunami in Japan. Many of them were reconstructed to GR's retain wall with a stage constructed for had ridge facing or GRS coastal dikes. So by structurally integrating the gather, the facing, and the backfill, GRS internal bridge exhibit essentially zero settlement in the backfill at no structural damage to the facing by seasonal thermal expansion and construction of the gather, while their stability against seismic loads and tsunami is very high. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, thank you very much for your very interesting lectures. Uh, on this occasion, I'd like to invite Dr. Sutisak to give a token of our appreciation to you. ขอเชิญท่านกลับมาที่ห้องเนี้ยเวลา 11:15 นาทีนะครับ